Exposition by Charles Hedden Spurgeon, Psalm 90 A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God It may help us to understand this psalm if we recollect the circumstances which surrounded Moses when he was in the desert. For forty years he had to see a whole generation of people die in the wilderness. In addition to the deaths which might occur among those who were born in the wilderness, the whole of that great host which came out of Egypt, numbering, probably, between two and three million persons, must lie in their graves in the desert so that there must have been constant funerals, and the march of the children of Israel could be perceived along the desert track by the graves which they left behind them. You do not wonder, therefore, at this expression of the awe of Moses, the man of God as he was so continually reminded of the mortality of mankind. And note how reverently and trustfully he turns to the ever-living and eternal God and rests in him. Verse 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Did not Abraham, and Isaac, and Jacob, and all our fathers dwell in you. And though we are now weary-footed pilgrims who have no fixed dwelling place on earth, we do dwell in you. You, Lord, are the true home of all the generations of your people. 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, or before you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. God is the only being who has had eternal and essential existence independently of all others, and all others have owed their existence to him. 3. You turn man to destruction and say, Return, you children of men. He sends us forth into life, and he calls us back again in death. 4. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night yesterday, while it was with us, was a short period of twenty-four hours. But when it is past, it seems like nothing at all. A thousand years, all big with events which we consider to be full of weight and importance, make up a long period in which myriads of men come and go, yet those thousand years, in God's sight, are but as yesterday when it is past or but as the few hours in the night during which the mariner keeps watch at sea and then is relieved by another. A thousand years are but as a watch in the night to the eternal, and he needs no one to relieve him, for he that keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. 5. You carry them away as with a flood. They have no power to stem the torrent. 5. They are as asleep. Our earthly existence is but as asleep. Many things are not what they seem to us to be in our fevered dreams. The time of awaking is coming and then things will appear very different to us from what they seem to be now. 5. They are like grass which grows up. Fresh, green, vigorous, lovely, restful to the eyes. 6. In the morning it flourishes and grows up, in the evening it is cut down and withers. It needs no long period, ages upon ages, to destroy its beauty. Only let the swiftly passing day come to its waning and the grass is cut down and withers. 7. For we are consumed by your anger, and by your wrath are we troubled. If we had to endure flames of God's anger, we would be consumed by it. But I think that Christians should not read this passage as though it applied to them. They are not under the divine anger, nor need they fear being troubled by the divine wrath, for his anger is turned away from them through the great atoning sacrifice of his Son, Jesus Christ. But the children of Israel in the wilderness were being consumed by God's anger and by his wrath they were being troubled so that the words of Moses did apply to them. 8, 9. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your countenance. 
for all our days are passed away in your wrath, we spend our years as a tale that is told. Like a romance, with which the Orientals still delight to beguile the passing hours. Such is the life of man, as a tale that is told. 10. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. This was a gloomy fact to Moses, who lived to be one hundred and twenty years of age and who probably remembered other men who had been far older than himself. Yet it is well that the ordinary period of human life has been shortened. It is still far too long for those who do evil, though it may not be too long for those who do good. Yet there are, even now, some who outlive their usefulness, and who might have been happier if they had finished their course sooner. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. 10. And if by reason of strength they are fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. Where do we fly? That is the all important point. The cutting of the string that holds the bird by the foot is a blessing or a curse according to the way in which it takes its flight. If we fly up to build our nest on yonder trees of God that are full of sap, then, indeed, we do well when we fly away. And we may even long for the wings of a dove, that we may fly away and be at rest. 11, 12. Who knows the power of your anger? Even according to your fear, so is your wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. It has been well said that many men will number their cows, and number their coins, but forget to number their days. Yet that is a kind of arithmetic that would be exceedingly profitable to those who practiced it aright. Counting our days and finding them but few, we should seek to use them discreetly, we should not reckon that we could afford to lose so much as one of them. Who would be a spendthrift with so small a store as that which belongs to us? 13, 14. Return, O Lord, how long? And let it repent you concerning your servants. O satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. If they are but few, yet let them be happy. Give us an abundance of your mercy, O Lord, and let us have it at once, so that however few our days may be, every one of them may be spent in the ways of wisdom and, consequently, in the ways of peace and happiness. 15. Make us glad according to the days wherein you have afflicted us, and the years wherein we have seen evil balance our sorrows with an equal weight of joys. Give us grace equivalent to our griefs and if you had given us a bitter cup of woe, now let us drink from the golden chalice of your love, and so let our fainting spirits be refreshed. 16. Let your work appear unto your servants. May we have grace to devote ourselves entirely to God's service and do the work which he has appointed us to do. 16. And your glory unto their children. If we may not live to see the success of our efforts, may our children see it. If the glory of that bright millennial age, which is certain to come in due time, shall not gladden our eyes before we fall asleep in Jesus, let us do the Lord's work as far as we can that our children may see his glory. 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish you the work of our hands upon us. Even if we die, let our work live. May there be something permanent remaining after we are gone, not wood, hay, and stubble which the fire will consume, but a building of gold, silver, and precious stones which will endure the fire that, sooner or later, will try every man's work of what sort it is. 17. Yes, the work of our hands establish you it.